All right, so for tonight, to start off, we are going to be playing the uh, Electro Dominance Living End deck that we saw and played against a while back. Someone sent us the list. Um, so it's just a black red deck, and of course, it plays the Living End. It uses a lot of draw engines through Faithless Lootings and Cathartic uh, Rituals, I mean, Cathartic Reunions. Got some interactions with the Lightning Bolts. Um, Mausoleum Secrets lets us search up um, the Living Ends if we need it which is really nice. Um, we've got Yehenny's uh, expertise to help us cast the living in if we really needed to. I'm not sure about this card because this is gonna kill the creatures on the board and then we cast living in, so I just bring everything they have back, but that's what was listed. Um, and then the Horror, Street Wraith, Monsters Caridots, and Desert Ceridons are your normal cyclers. Uh, they also run a uh, one of Dragon Lord Culligan and then Atarka, so I'm down for that. Uh, we definitely got hit by those cards last time. And then Electro Dominance is the new card we're going to be playing with. That is uh, going to let us cast the card from our hand, so if we cast it for just red, red, and zero, we're going to be able to cast that living in. Um, and then if we want to shoot for some extra damage as well. Uh, the sideboard seems to be a lot of one ofs, um, which I'm not really sure about, and then a lot of couple spots. So I got surgical for the graveyard interaction. In the list, it was an extra break, but uh, I typed it in wrong, and so I'm just going to be playing the surgical here because that's what I think it should be anyway. It's got some fatal pushes and cast downs for some uh, removal. It's got the cast uh, favor and cobs for uh, hitting their graveyards in case they're bringing back anything. The lost legacy as well to hit any kind of like combo deck we can get rid of their stuff. Alpine Moon I would imagine just for Tron style decks. Uh, Inga Chewers for the graveyard decks. Slaughter Games for another um, hitting combo pieces. Rakdos Charm has a lot of versatility hitting artifacts. Um, if someone tries to vanify our combo us, we can kill them with it. And then also hitting their graveyard and then Bajuka Bog for their graveyard as well. So, without much further ado, we're going to jump into a league and get going with this deck. Uh, this is my first time playing this deck, so we will see how this goes. Pretty excited to test it out. I did finish all of my homework before this got started, so I shouldn't have to worry about anything else coming up. The uh, assignment list was weird this week. It's got a yeah, like a quiz listed that um, isn't possible to do because it's like going over chapters that we don't have going on. We haven't read yet. So I think it's just a mistake. Um, so I'm hoping I emailed the professor and I was like, hey, this is not due yet. And then I've got other assignments that's like due in like 2018 instead of due, due in 2019. So also hoping that was just a, uh, a typo from their last semester teaching this class. And so not too bad. Uh, only got two, uh, only two more weeks of this class. And then after that, I'm sent to a... Uh, an independent study so gonna see how that plays out I've never been involved in an independent study for a class before and uh, I find it really interesting that one of the key classes for my finance masters is now an independent study so okay, pretty weird we're gonna edit our display we're playing electro living in Gengar. <laughs> Alright, let's see what we got here. We got uh, two cyclers and a cathartic, and we've got living in enhanced. We just need to find electro dominance. So this is not bad. I think this is a good keep, and we got a little bit of interaction as well. So go ahead and keep this. Temple of Enlightenment. Alrighty, and a 
I think let's start off by cycling. Our straight way. We did not hit a black source for this horror, but that's okay because we've got good fire deck. So let's pass it on over. Field of ruin. Alright, we've got a caravan. Uh, let's start by cycling that. So I want to see if we can hit a black source coming up here. Nope, but we had another living in, so I'm going to put it on the mountain and I'm going to pass here. And I'm, uh, I'm going to plan on using Cathartic Reunion next turn. Yeah, I would expect this to be a red-white prison or an enchantment deck as well. Uh, I think the cool part is we've got their... Oh, they've got Nahiri. Uh, we've got their field of ruins pretty much locked away because we only have mountains. So I'm not going to bolt here, because if we need to, we can bolt next turn, because we'll have three mana. So we're just going to pass. Alright, we still don't have a black source. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play Cathartic here. And I'm going to discard the Atarka for sure. And I'm trying to decide if I want to discard the Horror. I wanna, if I hit a black source, I would just want to use that. But uh, otherwise, it's kind of just gonna be a dead card. We've got a, we've got a mausoleum secrets in hand as well, um, that I think we want to hold on to because if needed, we can try to fetch up Yohane's secret. Um, but that would require getting more creatures in the graveyard. I don't think we need the backup living in. So let's go ahead and pitch that and see if we can hit a black source. We did. That's awesome. And we hit the Electro Dominance here. So I'm going to play this Dragon's Call Summit. I'll be planning on cycling the Horror here, or Bolting and then Horror. On our turn. Debatably, we might want to let them activate Nahiri before we use Electro Dominance. That way we can get rid of it. Up. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do, because there's really no reason to try to take out the Nahiri, and we're not going to be able to do it in any kind of meaningful way. So let's just go ahead and cycle this horror. Get a bloodstain. Alright. So I think we're just going to play a mountain here. Can get rid of Gideon too, which is nice. We could bolt the Gideon. No. So like I was thinking we could bolt the Gideon and then use Electro Dominance for one on Gideon, take it out. Um, but we want to go for them it to go to their turn before we do anything. Uh, because we want to have them activate Nahiri and then we can get rid of it with, with Living In. So let's just play the mountain and we're just gonna pass it over. Set the volume on that. I'm gonna turn that down. So sorry if that was loud to start with, guys. Yeah, if, if they don't do anything, we'll definitely shoot it for two with dominance, and then we can finish it off with a bolt. So let's just basically see what our opponent does. Gideon. Oh, they're gonna activate and hear you one more time. Okay, that's interesting. So I think worst case scenario, we're just dealing with a path. So we're gonna go to end step and then we'll activate our abilities. I'll 
plan on shooting Gideon because I want to get rid of that. Cast living end. Bring back all of our stuff. Go to our turn. Alright, so we've got some mausoleum secrets too, which will be good for at least fetching up one more living end. Alright, so I think we're gonna I'm expecting them to path our Atarka. So I wanna swing in a meaningful way to play around that. So what I think that's gonna mean is we're just gonna bolt the Gideon. And then figuring that they're going to hit the Atarka, uh, I think that means they're going to be able to uh, block up this and save Nahiri. So we got the other bolt for that. So let's see what our opponent does. So we're just going to swing every... Um, swing the Atarka at Chandra, and then we're going to swing everything else at Nahiri. And if they do block it, uh, we'll be able to... Pa uh, bolt and finish off Nahiri, and if they path the Atarka, then we're okay here. And if they know nothing, then we're just really happy. Cool. That's great. That's taken out. And then that's down. So then we're just going to bolt and finish off the Nahiri here. Alright, so that's... They're left with pretty much nothing, which is awesome. So they're going to do Judgment. It's not the worst thing in the world. Because we're going to Mausoleum Secrets here. Because um, we can get something that has four for our creatures in the graveyard. So why don't we fetch up with Bloodstain first. And we want to leave the Swamp in there because we're expecting them to feel the Bruinus eventually here. Secrets. And I'm going to snag that living end. Land. Now I'm just going to pass here because at the end step, at their end step, I can fetch up the honey secret and then I can living end up again. us for five here but that's okay because we're gonna get rid of their creature right, I think we can start off with a faithless to see if we get anything else that we want to bring back we got a Ceridon that will also pitch and then we can expertise Impressive board, see if they can wrath us again. If not, this game is in the bag. Alright, they're gonna heal us. Woot woot, got the win there. So Looks like they're just a red-white planeswalker deck with the Nahiri combo. 
So, the cards that I think we would want to bring in here would be Slaughter Games. And then I think we're going to want to bring in Lost Legacy just to take out their, um, the big spells they're going to be bringing in. I mean, uh, getting off with Nahiri. I'm not sure if Ingot sure is worth here. I'm expecting some kind of prison style effects, um, but with them being on the Nahiri combo, I don't know if they're going to be running the artifact stuff to slow us down. I'm expecting just kind of a bit of removal, so I think we're just going to bring these two in, and that's it. And then we're just going to take out two bolts in place of it, and I think we'll run it like that. Alright, we've got a lot of draw and discard effects here, so we can loot really well, and we've got one carabin to start us off, so definitely has a lot of potential to find what we're looking for. We've just seen, you know, see how far we can de dig. Alright, so they're gonna channel us for zero. That's what I, that's a mistake. I'm supposed to bring it in for that. So, with them having Chalice, we've got to bring in the Caravan. I mean, the Ingot Chewers that I did not bring in. So we can uh, go about this a different way. <laughs> uh, this is going to be an interesting game. Start off with Faithless. Nothing of value there. And we'll try it again. We already have the living in, and we don't need the stomping ground. So we are definitely bringing in Ing uh, Ingot Chewer, and we're probably going to bring in the Rectos Charm. Looks like they went Chalice into their own Chalice. And they've got a Rest in Peace. Whew. They are making our lives difficult. Alright. Change of plans. We are on the Red Black Beatdown deck plan. <laughs> so, we're going to discard these living ends, and we're going to play overcosted creatures and see if that will get us there. Man, this, um, this red-black version is going to have difficulty dealing with any kind of enchantment hate, such as Rest in Peace. They've got no way to deal with that. Really surprising. Alright, next turn we can cast our first creature, the Street Wraith. <laughs> See if 3 4 beatdowns are worth it. Alright, I've got a Nahiri. I mean, obviously, we've got all the land, so we can hit all of our uh, all of our creatures at this point. You know, not an issue. They discarded their uh, Emrakul, so it got exiled. And they're still trying to cast chalices into their chalice. Not hitting too. 
too many creatures. It's not an issue for us. So I think that hazard's gonna kill us. Without much effort. here to get it off the board. Let's see if we hit a creature to block because if we don't we're just dead. And we hit a slaughter games so that's not good enough. Alrighty. So we're bringing in the ingot chewers and we're gonna bring in the Rakdos charm. We can trim a few of the cyclers to make up for it, and I think we're also going to... They seem to have shifted game plans quite a bit. I think we're good to bring out this because they're not as combo-centric. They're de definitely on this mid-range plan. And I'm going to trim the other bolts. I think we'll leave the cyclers in just because I want to cycle into irrelevant items sooner. So, run it back. We've got Electro Dominance, which is good, uh, and Living Ends. We've only got one Cycler, but as long as we can uh, get a few more, we're going to be in a great spot. Hopefully they don't have a Chalice, because we don't have a Ingot Chewer right now. Looks like that's a rest in peace. Yes, it is. We can't deal with that card with this deck. <laughs> wow. Do we just lose to any white deck with this list? Is that how this works? Because that's like really sad if that's the case. Oh, I don't even really want to cycle the caravan. Like, is it going to just end up being a, waiting for them to have a hazard in play and then we have to living in it away and then uh, start? We've got a second recipe, some salad. We don't have any cards in the graveyard anyway, opponent. We don't even care. We can't even deal with the first one, so the second one's whatever. <laughs> I hope our opponent doesn't blow up our stomping ground, because uh, we kind of need it. <laughs> okay. Alright, we're going to cast it, and then uh, go on this monster, Green Red Monsters beatdown deck plan. It's a really solid plan. Oh, they definitely hit it. So we got one dragon in our deck we can't cast now. Good thing we got this cathartic reunion to discard it. Opponent's not even thinking. Four four beatdown plan in the works. They just negated some of our some of our effort. That's so rude of them. We're just over here trying to live a simple life. Okay, so I think I'm gonna hold the mountain because we've got plenty of lands in play. And I don't really want to discard the electro dominance or the living ends because it's our sweeper, and it might be one of our best ways to just take care of their planeswalker. Um, and take out like a hazard because we just don't have another way to deal with it. So I'm just going to hold that in hand and we're just going to keep pressuring them with this 4-4. Alright. 
secrets is fine. Um, we're just going to beat them again here. Why is our opponent undoing all of our work? It's so rude. All right, they've got a Nahiri. They're probably going to get rid of our Caravan. And they did. And we're probably going to get rid of theirs in response, because they're rude. going to hit that for four. We're going to cast this Cathartic. And we're going to discard the Mountain in the Muslim Secrets. Okay, okay, we're hitting more Living Ends. It's obviously great. Let's get this Faithless. See if we can uh, find any other creatures. Oh, we did. Awesome. Okay, we're going to discard a Living End and a Mountain. Drop a Dragon Skull, and we're going to cast this Horror. Pass to our opponent. Can't attack yet. And if we, we're just gonna hit them. So they can't attack with it yet. They've got four cards in hand. I'd be pretty impressive. They got rid of all four cards. But if they do, that's when we would want to do living in until then. It doesn't really matter. Oh, they're going to get rid of our horror. How rude. Yep, so we can conveniently electro dominance them for five, though, and then do it again and win the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, opponent, we've got you. Can't kill them with uh, our normal living in effect, so we're just gonna we're just gonna fireball them. <laughs> Ooh. It definitely seems like a huge flaw in this deck, though, that we can't beat Rest in Peace through our living in plan. So, I guess that's the downside of being in a uh, black red. We will gladly go first. Oh, all the draw facts. Yeah, we'll keep this. this. This hand will figure it out. Right? Just go fireball mode. That's all that matters. Alright, Street Wraith. Great. And we got a uh, we built it to get a black source now. So let's Faithless. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, I'm going to discard a Bolt and a Cathartic here because we can cycle the Ceridon and the Horror and I want to get the Bloodstain and then we, we, that way we can get another um, draw back with the Faithless later too. And hold up just in case they are a creature based deck we have a Bolt for it. I don't want to get rid of both of them. Got the living in. No issue. Finding all of our pieces. Just, it's just working out so well. 
Um, so in case we draw the electro dominance, I need access to red, so I'm going to shock myself here. And we can just cycle on there too. It seems good to us. What's this? Merfolk? Slivers. Oh man. That'll be fun. Alright, so that one counters our spells and abilities if we target their slivers. Unless we pay an additional two. Cycle the Ceridon. And then we'll cycle the Horror. Got a Dragon Skull. I'm cycling the Ceridon here because I want a Faithless possibly. In the Street Wraith, yep. I'll do that. Okay. Still trying to hit a Electro here. Um, I'm going to go Ceridon first before we go Faithless. So we're going to discard one more mountain. Wouldn't, I don't think the mountain's really worth it here. And I'd rather get rid of the Ceridon because next turn I'm going to go Faithless. And if we can hit Electrodominus, the, the graveyard's going to be pretty packed. So we'll pass here. Couldn't uh, get a draft going, Greg? I know you were looking to get one going a bit ago. All right, now their slivers have haste. And do we got a Lord Sliver? Nope, just more diffusion. Okay. We're not realistically going to be bolting them anymore. We really need to hit an Electro Dominance. Okay. I'm going to discard the bolts here because we're, we're not going to be casting them anymore. Um, got the facelift. Alright, so we did get a mausoleum. That is not gonna help but that's gonna get us the Yeheni, which will be good. So I wanna keep that. So we can discard the Cathartic and the Living End, play the mountain, this turn, drop uh, cast the Yeheni, as long as they don't kill us on their turn, we'll wipe the board. There's a very real chance though that if they drop uh, a single lord, we're, we're dead here because they'll just be able to activate the Mutal Vault and kill us. People, all right, nice. Found the Phoenixes and you made profit at the draft. Sweet man. Ooh, they got double strike, and that's haste, and that's enough damage to kill us. What a tragedy. Alright, so I don't want to search up anything because we're just dead here. And negative. We just got killed by slivers. Man. Lord tech, alright. So I want to bring in some removal, um, just a bit, because so, they, they have the potential to get their lords out of control. 
Uh, I don't think we necessarily need anything else. I wouldn't, uh, but I'm gonna bring in the fairy macabres actually because we can get rid of their creatures once we get rid of them. Um, they're on a more aggressive plan, so I don't really. I can, I'm gonna trim two of the street wraiths here, and because I want just a hard removal, I'm gonna trim a couple of the bolts because we bring in the fatal clutches and cast downs, and I'm gonna bring. Trim one more. And I think our weak... Carabin's got the most flexibility when it comes to cycling. So I think we're going to get rid of the Atarka. This gives our creatures haste, and we can kill them on the same turn we're living in. So, I think this is what we're gonna run with. <laughs> Sliver League, you know, we can put that uh, on the list of playing, but uh, I, we are committed to playing the Phoenix deck next. Actually, speaking of which, if you have a list in particular that you want us to play for the Sliver, let me—I mean, for the um, Phoenix deck—I know you're building one. Let me know. We can definitely play that. This hand's good. We've got our, our combo here to wipe the board. Uh, we just need to hit a couple more cyclers and we're going to be in a great spot. And we're just going to shock ourselves. Did you guys see the... Um, there was a Boros Soldiers deck that uh, went 9-0 in the modern GP. Fatal push is not bad. All right, we got a Ceradon. That's awesome. Right, that's a Lord one. We're going to get rid of that. So we're going to cycle first, see what we get. So we can get rid of it with the Electro Dominance if we want to, but we'll wipe it with the Living in Effect. So we'll hold off just a little bit. Bolt. I think 10 power is good enough, honestly. So we're going to pass them back to them, see if they drop... Yeah, it was it was pretty sweet. Um, it was not Dykeman, I don't believe so. I was told that GP didn't even get any coverage either. That's that's insane to me. Like they just don't do it anymore. I don't get it. It was it, it felt like it was pretty close to just a, a red white humans list, and then it just happened to have a few. All right, so they're playing more stuff. That's awesome because we're just gonna be wiping the board. And if they're just going to use their slivers, yeah. And then they can sacrifice from gain three life. All right, so then if we living end, they're going to be able to gain nine life. But if we don't do it right, if we do it right now, they can still gain three life, but they get to keep their sliver. And I think that's, hmm, I think that's probably, I don't really want to give them another turn but if we do it right now they basically get another turn away so this is still fine i think we're just gonna do it right now and we're just gonna hit them for an extra point Cut coverage for GP Magic Fest. I don't understand. I mean, that well, was there a good reason for that? Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. You were definitely right. The sack ability is going to just bring everything back. So good call. I wanted to do it right now because I didn't want them to gain the life anyway. So that is another layer to it. All 
Oh, they brought in Fairy Macabre for us. Wow. How rude. Uh, so we're not gonna... Oh man, I think we still wanna cast the Living End because it's gonna wipe their board. But we really have nothing. We're gonna have to use Bolt and Push and get rid of their other stuff, but... What a crappy situation. How dare they next level us? what they got. Yeah, it makes sense that there's a huge uproar. I mean, how are you going to cut coverage for an event? Alright, they, they're going to gain regenerate, so right now I think we're just going to go ahead and bolt this one to get it off the board. We don't want to deal with that later on. <laughs> Too worry about the fairy macabre because because it is not a silver so we can't get all those extra effects that they're going to be able to have. It might even be better at the point because we don't have a living in. Just play this tapped. Uh, we have removal that we can hold up and then we can drop the uh, the horror. That is just a regular casted creature. You're on the conspiracy theory that Wizards is going to kill paper magic and all paper events in lieu of an MTGA esports. E That's such a bad plan. Alrighty, so they're hitting us for five here. We can take out the fairy with cast down and then play the horror just to block the other creature. I think that might be what our game plan is now because just because we can have a solid blocker for this um, sliver. Yeah, I mean, I can see that happening. It's a, it's a really bad move. Um, like, you, why would you get rid of something that is doing well for you just because it you, you're seeing high potential in the online market, you know? And I really hope that's not the case, because I love Paper Magic. Like, if there's, like, it's such a bad plan. Like, Star City has been running better events than Wizards has been for a while now. Alright, they just gave all their slivers flying. We've got expertise though, so we can neg the board. I don't think we want to wait one more turn. Because they've only got one card left in hand, so if, they, if it was another sliver, they would have played it. So let's just wipe the board. And then we can drop the horror. This is what we do. We're a black red mid range deck now. Sacrifice this permanent for one and deals one damage, or pay one, sacrifice, and prevent the next damage. Okay. I think we're just going to get rid of it, to be honest. Because we're not going to be able to get rid of a sliver. Same thing when we drop the horror. And we'll play that 
tapped. Little fast. See if we can get there with this, with this horror. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know, George. Like that's that's pretty messed up if that's what their plan is. We've got double strike. Okay. We've got living in. I think we're just passing here because our creature would trade with theirs. Swing, they can block and trade. We hold back, they can sack their sliver and hit us with the bone scythe. If they sack and blow up our horror, we can fatal push in response. I think we're just passing them. Oh, if anyone uh, missed the other stuff, I didn't mean. I did post everything uh, as far as videos. Yeah, I mean, it's. Okay, so you're half joking. Wouldn't be surprised if it's true. We've been under wraps about GPs, been losing money for years now. Yeah. Okay, they're just gonna pass it back to us. I'm actually surprised they didn't sack the first strike sliver, get rid of our whore, and beat us in for eight. We can drop a caravan. Means we are gonna have to swing with it next turn. Oh, they sacked at the end step here to get rid of one of our creatures. I think we would want to get rid of the necrotic. So otherwise they can just keep taking out our permanents. Yeah, they're gonna get rid of that. We let it go, of course, because we can't do anything about it. Um, if, we get, if we don't get rid of the necrotic, they're just gonna take out all of our threats over and over. So I think we let it go. And then we get rid of the necrotic. This could open up if they drop like a, a pump creature that the double strike's gonna get out of control, but as of right now, we would be trading. Um, they're gonna win this race though, because we're gonna be swinging for four, and they're gonna be swinging for four, and we're at 13 right now, so they're 21. And they got another necrotic. Awesome. Okay, so we're swinging for sure. can't really cast our living in because they've got too much of a board presence. We could electro dominance here and take out the bone side, put them on a slower game plan. Oh, I don't like it anywhere we're at right now. Living in's no good because our graveyard is just not full enough. If we wait till their turn, they're going to be able to sack whatever we want to hit in response. If we don't take out the necrotic sliver, we're going to mount, we're going to be on a losing race. Uh, okay. Let's hit it for two, and we're not going to cast a spell in our hand.
two cards in the graveyard too. Cool. Sliver cycling. What are they gonna get? <laughs> Look at five, Lord. <laughs> uh, oh, joy. Uh. <laughs> That's definitely a cast in Hive Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and if we're living in, we just make ourselves in a worse situation. <laughs> yeah, Hive Dad is definitely falling in the driveway. Um, <laughs> we're gonna swing our creature into Hive Lord, it dies. And then they're gonna beat us for seven, and then we, if we cast a creature, <laughs> they just get rid of it. <laughs> um, I don't think there's anything in our deck either. I'll search right now to double check, but I don't think there's anything for us to get because we're only gonna be searching for a two drop, which I think means the uh, other removal spell we could get is useless. Or no, it's just living in is all that's left. And a, another mausoleum. <laughs> so this is a game. <laughs> right, he's definitely taking out the belt. Um, hmm. <sighs> There's nothing that I can think of left that we can do, so I think that's it. I'm gonna swing our creature into theirs. And then we're gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna let them kill us. I don't know how often they get to kill with the Hive Lord, and I would wanna be able to kill the Hive Lord if I was playing the Sliver deck. <laughs> and they have lifelink now. This game's so over. And that's a carabit, and that's gonna be. We're gonna cast now. Nah, let's cycle. I guess see what we get. Serenon, sure. We'll cycle you too. I don't even want you. You're useless to me. A mountain. You're useless to me too. <laughs> All right, we'll let them kill us. We just died to slivers, guys, in modern. I feel like we should have beat their deck, but we didn't. <laughs> they had a better creature plan than we did. <laughs> Man, we got hit with that belt so hard. Sad. I don't even understand how their GPs are such a low income, and if they're taking making such a loss anyway, they use 
they used to be able to run GPs for like half the cost and people were happy about it. Oh yeah, Hive Daddy gave us that rough love. Like, hasn't it only gone downhill after Channel Fireball took over all the GPs? I left, I mean, for that four-year gap or three-and-a-half-year gap for Magic, so... Before I left, GPs were great. And then I came back, and GPs are, like, one of the last things I want to go to now. On the other hand, I'll go to, like, any Open or IQ or the Invitational. I will gladly go first. All right, we've got half of the combo. We've got the honey's expertise to light the board and cast the living end. So we've just got to hit the living end. We've got two reunions. I think that's gonna be a little rough, but we'll take it. I think we're just gonna do that and Pass it over. Orbor. Okay, I think we're gonna shock ourselves here with a blood crypt. And then we're gonna cycle. Our turn. So the Atarka's in our hand already, so we're not going to need that stomping ground, so... That's cathartic. Yeah, yeah. Got the Dominance, too. We've got the Mausoleum Seekers to fetch up our Living End. What a great day. Okay, that's really rude of our opponent. They're going to get rid of our black source. So we can no longer fetch up our living end with mausoleum secrets. So we're going to cycle. Play this mountain. And I think we're in a cathartic here. And we're going to discard the horror for sure. And I think the mountain here, because if we can hit another black source, this mausoleum secrets will find us the answer we're looking for. And I want a whole. The well, Hennies might be. Double black's really far off right now. Yeah, let's get rid of the Hennies because we're, the other mountain might be relevant here because we'll be able to Electro Dominus and hit them possibly just with a little extra damage. Because this, this is not going to cast reasonably. Alright, we got a Blood Crypt. So next turn we can go Secrets first. I'd love to get this Dragon Lord in the graveyard. Just wreck our opponent all in one turn. No, but we can't have everything. We got to be reasonable. Ha ha ha. Sweet! We got a Faithless. So we're definitely going to hold on to the Blood Crypt, but why don't we Faithless first? Because then we'll be able to uh, Mausoleum Secrets and the Electronomus on our turn, and then Dragon Lord can get us the um, Awkward Just of Haste. We'll kill him on our turn. Well, I mean, do we just have Lethal either way? Because this says double strike, so that's 12. Yeah, that's. I think that's just being greedy and opening ourselves up for a little bit more risk. So we'll just go Blood Crypt untapped, and we'll just pass it over. You just beat the Slivers guy, or did you just beat the Merfolk guy? Because if you beat the Slivers guy, I'm really sad because we got crushed by it. 
Ooh, master waves. Sure, no problem. Fuck. All right, nice, nice. So obviously, because you beat them, we're gonna beat them too. That's how this works, right? Oh my gosh, this spell pierced. Oh my gosh, opponent, that's so rude. So we can't drop the Dragon Lord right now. You need to get your hands on another Living End or another uh, another Living End or another Mausoleum. Let's go this first. Casting the Dragon Lord is not going to do much for us, I don't think, because on their turn they're going to be able to swing at us for two, four, six, three Meter Vaults. That's lethal. We can kill one potentially with a. I think we've just got to go hard. And just dig with Street Wraiths. Is that just the game plan right now? Because we can't cast Dragon Lord this turn. We can't cast Street Wraith this turn just to block. And if, even if we did, we would die anyway. Can't kill the Master with Electro Dominance. So I think we're just going to bend these two. And we're just going to dig. Discard these two. Still didn't get it. Oh my gosh! This game. They spell pierce us. That's so rude. They're gonna let us have the potential stay alive. Sure, we'll target this. <laughs> Victory. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that played out so well. <laughs> 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 
crushed them. <laughs> oh. Whew. All right. Um. So I want to bring in the Rakdos charm here. And I want to bring in the cast downs and the fatal pushes. Um, and the fairy macabs here because they're on a creature plan. And we're going to trim the bolts here because I wanted the hard removal instead. And then we're just going to trim two straight wraiths. I <laughs> can't believe we won that. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. So what do you guys think of this deck so far? I don't think this is ever going to be a, well, as of right now, I don't think it's a tier 1 deck by any means, but it's a pretty fun deck. Three living ends in hand, I think it's just too much. Like, that's already basically a mulligan, so I think we're going to go down. This is much better. Um, and we got a push on top, we'll take that. And we'll gladly shock that in because we can either cycle the Ceradon or hit him with the Fatal Push here. Okay. I think we're just going to pass for now. line we're going to want to go, but we could dominance to take out the Lord or the Miss Caller here for two. And then hmm, that relic's going to pose such a problem for us. Could cycle the Carabid because we're gonna have to get them to pop off that um, relic either way. And this that's the other one we gotta get rid of. We can get rid of that with Electro Dominance, but we're gonna have to fill the graveyard up enough to make this worthwhile for them to pop off. So we could go cycle Carabid here into a Cathartic, try to hold up, see what we get. We might just be discarding that along with Mausoleum Secrets. Um, just to get up to the point where next, the following turn we can electro dominance, wipe the board. Um, the problem with hitting that with electro dominance though is that it's just going to trigger it. Um, there, so they would just sack it. 
and then everything gets brought back. God, that's so awkward for us. Okay, I think we might just have to cast these creatures naturally. Sure, I got a fatal push. Passing these creatures normally and then using these other cards as just removal spells? Is that where we want to be in life? Because if we do, we might as well just dominance for two right now and take out the Lord. the cathartic here drop the secrets in the living end and then just try to get another land to drop this carabin right now but it's not hitting anything we'll just be getting rid of it I think we're better off just dropping creatures because having two four fours in play should be good enough to beat them up pretty well Swing here. And we're going to cast the carabin. No, they're going to bounce our dude. That's fine. Which is fine for us. We have to swing first, so we might as well see how they play that out. Maybe take the hit. Drop the whore. Another harbinger? No, it's all gone. Okay. They are loading up that board a good bit. One more lord and that's going to pose a huge problem. Or if they just get a spreading seas. And going on the aggressive plan. It's fine, we're going to block this. One just in case they phantasmal image. If we wipe the board, be good. Do we have to we swing? Hopefully, they just take the hit here. Okay. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we're one mana short of actually just killing them between. Oh, wait, no. We're good, right? We actually kill them? They activate both. They activate both their Muta Vaults, go in for the lethal swing on us, and we'll electro dominance them for uh, three, and then Rakdos charm them for the last necessary point. We don't, however, win if they don't activate their Muta Vaults. Alternatively, we just cast Yehenny's Expertise, and then that will put us to. That'll put us to one on their turn after they swing us with both Muta Vaults. I think the risk is worth it here. So I think we just pass. Because we can just beat them out. We can just blow them out right now if they go for the activating Muta Vaults and swing. We just need them to activate one. They weren't greedy. I needed them to be greedy. One. Okay, so if they're swinging here, we need to cycle into a We need to cycle into a living in. No, because I can only do it for three for uh, expertise. Because uh, expertise would cost four. So, and I only had five mana. too greedy folks the reasonable play would have just been casting Yehenny's expertise but I think being at one would have just killed us so I am counting that correctly all right we can hit them for one two previously it was three so yeah We'll bring in the ingot chewers now. Drop the street wraith. And one carabid. Yeah, but it's x equals two, right? So it's whatever you put into it. Just because you're paying four mana doesn't mean you get to do um You have you, you like if you cast dominance for two, you're only casting a two or less spell from your hand. You know, if you do it for four, you have, you would have to do it for four in order to cast expertise. is a pretty slow hand but it's got a lot of interaction a lot of draw effects and a lot of cyclers I think this is fine unless I'm misunderstanding the card race but yeah because it's red red X and then you deal X damage to any target and you may cast a card with convert a mana cost X or less from your hand So I want a Faithless here, because I just want to draw a little bit deeper. See if we can hit the another red source. Okay, they're gonna they're gonna spell pierce us. I mean the card is fine. It's not busted or anything. Alright, we hit another land. 
And I think we're just going to pass here because we can cycle in, we can push out the uh, master. Silver Gill. Oh, you only read the first part of it? Yeah, no, it's whatever you invest into it as X, not the total casting cost. Okay, that's bad for us. And that's bad for us. to make them pop one of get one of the relics out of the way right now and just yeah I guess we can at least do it at instant speed okay I think we're just gonna pass here and we're just gonna plan on them wiping out our graveyard Creatures in the graveyard mean secrets right now. C can't get us Yehenny's expertise. Could get us another another living end, but we've already got one, and the other fatal push is already gone. Doesn't seem to have much value. They've got another silver gun on hand. I think cathartic would just be putting more fodder in the graveyard. Okay. Um, hmm. I think we just gotta dig deeper. And not worry about the relics anymore. So I think we're just gonna cathartic here, pitch the secrets and the living in. See what we can hit. Just get rid of their silver gill as well, because we're gonna, that's just gonna keep pressuring us. And then just reset that graveyard. Okay, they 
I've got a trickster in hand. Might just be using dominance as a board wiper with living in at some point here. Because they got a bunch of creatures and we don't have any. Trickster. Yeah, I'll drop the trickster. I think we can take this first hit. They're gonna image and probably copper copy the adept. Just hopefully have them increase their board presence. And we'll just let the end. They're not going to do it, so I think we're still just going to dominance. Sure, blow up the relic. And they've got another trickster for end of the game. Oh. Too good. All right, so we are one and two going into the fourth match here with Electro End. seems pretty fun i do miss the ability to have green though because with living in you had like beasts with ends and other enchantment hate and um, to just take care of any threat you wanted and so i really like that aspect and even though the deck was more mana intensive it seemed to be a little bit more streamlined than this one um because it could also just take the opponent off of their game with like fulminators and holding them off and then Beast with any of their lands too is, is pretty sweet. Alright, so this hand has no cyclers. And we've got part combo, but I don't think we can keep this because we've got zero cyclers. So we're not gonna be doing anything for quite some time. Alright, this hand's got Electrodominus and Living Hand. We got three cyclers, so let's go ahead and keep this. Um, we've got a bolt as well, so we're gonna shock ourselves. cycle here for a land but I want to hold up bolt in case um, there's something we want to hit voice okay I'm not too worried about voice bolt on their turn anymore anyhow so we're just gonna cycle again see if we can get a, a land we just need one yes got it all right so then we're just gonna cycle again uh, drop the other horror and then we're gonna be able to oh maybe we want a bolt if we bolt no 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 I don't like that 
them having a 1-1 one, one is not worth us doing all the rigmarole. So they're, they're going to lose it anyway. So. Another voice. That's fine. That means they're going to have some 2-2s, two -two but our creatures are going to be massive. Cast dominance on their turn. They lose their creature. I mean, they get two triggers, and then Living End gets two more triggers, but then they lose all the creatures, and they're just left with just two twos. Um, so I think that's fine. So we can bolt one, get it out of the way. Then we can swing. They block this. No, that's not. That's still not lethal. So we're just we're just gonna swing. See what they do. Double up on the carabin. We cycle once, these are going to become 10. Let's see what we hit off this cycle. Land. I don't think we care about saving this carabin. Sweet. Pretty sweet. Alright. This seems to be just some mid rangey. Looks like little kid little kid Abzan. So I wanna bring in the fairies. For sure. And then I think we want to bring in the uh, at least one cast down if we really want to deal with that route. But maybe maybe we've just been boarding in creature removal when we shouldn't be. Like we should just be focusing on the, the game plan as much as possible. Because um, if we go off, we just win anyway. They might bring in some relics here, but they probably should be fine with just oozes. So I'm not gonna expect that too much. Um, maybe we still want to bring in like two of them, cut two bolts, and then just try to go off with our creatures here and slow them down with fairies. Okay, so we've got Mausoleum Seekers to find half of the combo. And we've got two cycle effects. One getting rid of their stuff, but They say bolt the bird. Let's 
smiter? Nope, and I have a lot of them. Okay. That let's get cycle. Cycle. Do we need to cast Muslim? I don't think so. If we no, it would be one extra turn anyway. Because I was thinking we could evoke Ingature just for nothing, just to get it into the graveyard so we can... Uh, we could Fairy Macabre, actually. We can Fairy Macabre because we've got three creatures in the graveyard. It will bring us up to four. And then we'll be able to Yeh grab Yeheni's Expertise and then cast that. So let's play this and just pass turn. And we can bank off just... Um, casting living in next turn through Yehani's expertise. up to four creatures and then we will Muslim secrets it will bring back their stuff but it's uh, it's fine our creatures have class theirs They've just got a voice. Cathartic. We can get a stomping ground with this, and then if we just hit it on the land, we'll be able to get them. for us. The other faithless here. I guess that it's going to be discarding whatever I draw. If I do that, I guess I don't need to be hitting anything right now. I mean, I'm just going to be dropping this attack on my turn and then swing again. And this, I mean, it looks like they got no lands. So yeah, this game is just over. Yeah. All right, two two. Just took down little Kid Abzan. They didn't do much, they drew a lot of lands. 
unfortunately for them. Reese, you got a particular list of uh, Blue Red Phoenix you've been liking? Anything that's uh, different with it than what we would expect? A couple cyclers, but we're on a one lander. Into cathartic. Eh, that's fine. <laughs> They're down to six. They're down to five. And we will pass. Ceridon. Still want to try to hit a land here. Oh, they're just conceding. Okay. Alright, so I'm not going to make any changes because I don't know what they're on. So. One cycler, but we also have the cathartic the following turn, so and we've got half of the combo. Oh, they're on hardened skills. That's annoying for us because they can definitely sack their board in response to what we're doing. So we need to hit that uh, electro dominance pretty quick here. Okay. Sounds good then. We'll probably just be snagging that up. Alright. Luckily, it looks like they just got a 2 2 this turn. Let's see if we can hit a dominance. No dominance still. Oh, there it is. Okay. Hmm. Are those two creatures good enough? I'm not sure if they are. We may need to cathartic first to get this dragon in the graveyard first. Um, but if we do dominance, they're down to just one thing. Yeah, you know what? They would be down to just a single land. They, they're missing the other land drop and they, don't, they won't lose an artifact for their Mox Opal. I think that's plenty. Now we've got pretty good pressure. Oh, that's it. But I conceded. <laughs> All right. So that uh, wraps up the deck. Um, I do like this deck. It seems really fun. I feel like this would be a great deck to just play like F and M, just have some fun with it. Um, I de definitely think it needs to be tweaked a little bit more. Um, I wouldn't mind going into green just a little bit 
more than what it is right now. So you have because you're already running with one of stomping around anyway, so you can access this to some more stuff in the graveyard um, sideboard for the enchantment hate. Because the fact that we have no way to deal with the rest in peace is just um, it's, it's mind boggling to me. Because that's just a game if they do it to us, pretty much. We're on the slow creature beatdown plan, and that's not where we want to be with. Um, this deck at all because it's not going to be able to keep up with any modern deck but not bad went three two so that means uh we're going to stop recording the video 